Well, like any other uh, media site, you know, that's something that our readers trust us to help figure out. Um, but we think, uh, you know, far too much media focuses on uh, trivial stuff, celebrity news, gossip, uh, stuff that doesn't actually, you know, help people be better citizens or understand what's going on. And that's when we started Upworthy, we really started uh, with a focus on just publishing stuff about that important topics. Now, you get, you get so much attention for your headlines, just a couple recent headlines. Science are trying to talk, scientists are trying to talk to aliens, and it's mega interesting. Or, unless you're ridiculously wealthy, I have a feeling this graph might make you pretty angry. How do you come up with these headlines? Is there some written rule of thumb or some sort of methodology? Um, we have just an excellent team of curators that uh, they're a really interesting, really creative, really generative bunch of folks. And we gave them the mission of just try to make stuff interesting, try to figure out why somebody who is very busy, has a thousand other things to do, has 1,500 things in their Facebook newsfeed that they could click on. How do you make them care about this right now? And we, we basically started by throwing out the old playbook of the proper way to write a headline, the proper way to run a media company, and decided to just say, like, how would we do it now for our friends and for the people we know, what's, what's real and personable and actually connects with people. Now, as Upworthy's traffic has shot up, so has sort of controversy around the site. What do you say to people who, who, who claim you're stealing their content and just changing the headline? We actually get very, very little uh, feedback like that. The actual feedback we get are from these people that put their heart and soul into a video, posted it to YouTube, and it got 100 views, or 200 views, or 500 views. And then one of these Upworthy curators found it, uh, packaged it, and shared it with our huge audience, and it got 500,000, or a million, or 5 million views. There's been a, a lot of written about you guys lately. It's pretty, some pretty interesting stuff. And I wonder, how would you guys define the phrase click fraud? Well, I think, uh, you know, click fraud generally actually refers to, you know, bots or someone else running up the numbers. Uh, what we do is actually, you know, try to devise headlines that bring people to content that they'll love. And Upworthy only really works if people get to the content and love it so much that they want to share it with all of their friends. That's why, you know, while the average media site gets about 600 uh, social actions, shares, likes, and comments, Upworthy, on average, per piece posted, gets about 31,000. That's how much people actually want to share our content. So talk to us about your audience. Who, who do you consider your target audience? Fast Company called you the fastest growing media company in the world. Tell us just how fast it is growing. Um, I think it's actually in the known universe, uh, the latest that we heard. But uh, we, the way we think of our audience, we have about 8 million core subscribers. We think of them as the Upworthy community. They've signed up to get Upworthy every day. And it's this uh, passionate, wonderful group of people who haven't totally given up on the world. And they, in turn, share the Upworthy content out to about 50 million people a month. What do you do to increase the value of them to your advertisers? Because obviously the numbers of clicks are there, the number of people going to the site seem to be there, but, but what do you do to increase the value over time? Well, I think the value uh, really is in uh, tapping into this trend of people who you know, want to do well and do good and uh, you know, who, who believe in values that go beyond just uh, you know, sort of buying things and want to buy products that are good for the world. Um, that's one of the things that we found in our recent research was that you know, there's this real concentration among our audience of people who want to be introduced to uh, products and brands that actually uh, you know, help them make better, more socially conscious buying decisions. How do you think you guys compare to like a BuzzFeed or even the secret apps out there like Whisper and Secret? You know, Whisper, of course, hired a guy from Gawker and they're trying to, to resurface potentially viral content as well. Um, I think, you know, the real differentiating thing about Upworthy is that we start from the mission first. We say we're trying to draw massive amounts of attention to the topics that really matter. And I think, um, you know, on day one we set the rule we're only going to post things that we think really achieve that mission. I think a lot of media sites uh, make the, the general trade-off where they're going to have the content that they're really proud of that might win them a Pulitzer or something like that, and then they have the content that they know is going to drive traffic. At Upworthy, we set out to say, let's make the content that we're really proud of that really moves the needle forward in for society and make that drive the traffic. What is the most shared Upworthy post of all time? I think the most shared uh, was this amazing 20-minute video about uh, a teenager named Zach Sobiech's uh, battle with cancer. 
Um, produced by Soul Pancake, this great video. Um, it got seen over 17 million times. And I mean, I think it's an amazing thing that we've learned in our journey just in the last two years is the stuff that you think is gonna go viral isn't the stuff that goes insanely viral. Like a 20 minute video about cancer. And it, it doesn't, it has an inspiring ending, but like he loses the battle with cancer. It's a very serious, very real video. Um, and, and it's the number one of all time from our site. And you guys are launching upward, upworthy collaborations. You know what is that, and 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 where where is the future for you guys? Um, well, upworthy collaborations are a new way for us to work with brands and focus on the thing that we're really the best at, and that I think a lot of brands are trying to do as well, which is start conversations and draw attention to really important topics and brand values uh, and other issues of note. So. We uh, can work with brands in a number of ways. Uh, our, our number one way is to focus on sponsored curation. So we work with a brand to figure out where their brand values are. So not just uh, can you sell this product, but what are you trying to evoke in the world? And we look for an overlap between that and something that we care about deeply.